Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? I, I don't know. Sure you do. The tempo? Were you rushing or were you dragging? I, I don't know. Start counting. Five, six, seven. In four, damn it! The film we will be analyzing is the award winning drama Whiplash, directed by Damien Chazelle, with cinematography done by Sharon Mir. The scene we'll be deconstructing is the not quite my tempo scene and Andrew Neiman, played by Miles Teller, is slightly out of time with the band and Terence Fletcher, played by J.K. Simmons, flips, throwing a chair at his head and screaming in his face. We will look at some of the techniques used to achieve this cinematic look created by Chazelle and Mir and how they combine to create the final image. This particular scene was shot specifically using an Arri Alexa to utilise its full colour space to separate Neiman from the background and introduce the warm, harsh lighting that is ever present within this scene. The Alexa's original very flat image quality allows the colour grader to make the image much deeper in post-production and brings the colour palette to the forefront of the scene. The colour palette for this scene includes warm lighting tones from the wall fittings, which are here and here, and dark browns and murky tones from the walls and instruments. Other colours include the light blue from Neiman's shirt, which clearly stands out compared with other costumes, as well as black from Fletcher's t-shirt and shadows. All the other members of the band are wearing costumes that blend in with the colour palette, and I believe Chazelle has done this deliberately, as they do not really have significant relevance to the scene. The warm lighting has been chosen to make the room seem welcoming, and the environment the band members would want to come and play in as well as a similar style to lighting that would be displayed during a performance in front of a live audience. The lighting within this scene is a key detail and is best expressed through the choice of soft and hard lighting on the characters. The contrast between the soft and hard tones adds to the relationship between the audience and the characters' feelings. As this scene is about the pressure put on Neiman by Fletcher, the cinematographer, Mir, is trying to express this by using a harsh direct top light making him stand out from the rest of performers within the shot as shown here. This is complemented by the costume as Neiman is the only one with a lighter tone shirt creating a separation between him and the background. This colour contrast is best shown when Fletcher throws a chair at Neiman. This contrast could signify that he's not yet part of the band and looks like the odd one out in comparison. Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? Key element that works within this scene is the surprise that Neiman has when the chair is hurled by Fletcher at his head for not being on his tempo. Of cinematography that enabled Chazelle to achieve such a clean and polished final piece was the quick cuts crossed with the added sound effect of the chair hitting the wall. Changing the sound from diegetic to non-diegetic as it cuts to reaction shot from the rest of the band adds to the confusion of the situation and gives the audience a viewpoint from a character in a similar position to themselves. The quick cuts added here show the shock from all members within the room and the volume of the chair hitting the wall indicates to the audience that Fletcher threw it with some force. It creates a mood within the room, further demonstrating the power Fletcher has over the band as a normal teacher would be unable to get away with these actions as a teaching method. After the chair is thrown, we cut back to a long reaction shot of Neiman staring at Fletcher. This is a good example of the hard lighting used. Chazelle shows an extreme close-up of Neiman's facial features which is highly contrasted from the background, with the shadows and highlights being very shaped. Comparing this with the lighting on Fletcher, it is much softer, showing Fletcher's demeanour to be calmer and more relaxed. The backlights fill the space behind him, keeping the contrast a similar level throughout the shot, creating a much more interesting sequence. As the intensity of the scene increases and Fletcher comes closer towards Neiman, the lighting on Fletcher changes to the same harsh top lighting Five, six, as was originally on Neiman. Chazelle wanted to create a mood within the scene of intense presence over Neiman to show to the audience he is a physical figure over him as well as subliminal mental figure bearing weight down on him. Six, In four, damn it, look at me! The framing is important here as the low angle gives Fletcher's character control and dominance over Neiman. The main area of focus in the shot is of Fletcher's facial features, giving the indication to the audience of his angry demeanour. 
Crossing this with his deep vocal undertones makes it a very threatening shot for the viewer to watch. Six, seven, In four, damn it! Look at me! Another key frame selection occurs after Fletcher throws a chair at Neiman. Chazelle changes the shots on Neiman to an extreme close-up, meanwhile keeping the shots on Fletcher at a mid-shot. This is because in the context of the scene, Fletcher is calm while ne Neiman's heart is racing due to the events that have just unfolded. The cinematography of changing the distance and construction of the characters is used to show emotion and the intensity in the viewpoint of the character on the screen. Although throughout the shots, Neiman is condensed against the side of the frame, giving Fletcher a larger presence on the screen and representing the power over the actions, while Neiman is condensed, out of focus and claustrophobic, confining his presence, giving him limited influence. The mise-en-scene has been constructed so Fletcher is at the front of the room as the conductor of the band, with all the band members looking directly at him. Neiman is located to the left side of Fletcher, with a backup player behind him and the rest of the band members in lies respective of their instrument to make them all visible to both Fletcher and the audience. The position Fletcher has within the room naturally gives him authority over the members of the band as he is the centre of attention within his own working space, and everyone within the room is there specifically for his expertise. Diegetic dialogue I, is used I throughout this do. scene as the centerpiece the of the sound in this sequence. Chazelle and Mir use the cinematography to elevate uh, the vocal know. sections, especially Fletcher's dialogue, which is very Start direct counting. and immediate. His dialogue I, I has been know. constructed as if Fletcher has already anticipated what Neiman was going to say. Him? This is done by transitioning between the shots I, with I quick know. jump cuts, from Neiman looking shocked immediately Start to counting. Fletcher when he opens his mouth, I, I don't linked know. with True. another jump cut back to an extended long shot of Neiman's face as he's tucked back to capture the reaction of this rapid response. Know. The delay of the reaction from Neiman creates power within the scene as Neiman's going from a confident drummer to questioning himself about why Fletcher is acting aggressively towards him within the space of a minute's worth of film. You can see the camera motivation used by Mir to single out this particular response as it is a relatable emotion to the viewer. Depth of field is an important cinematic structure within these shots as when Neiman is in shot, he is deeply out of focus with Fletcher. Mir and Chazelle use this technique to show they are not synchronised with each other, which is a reflection of both their personality and their music. This technique is used throughout the scene, showing the mental state of Neiman being unsure of what his next action will be. This, linked with the claustrophobic feel of the framing, adds to the audience getting a better indication on the confused state Neiman is in.